Hi there, Danny. What's your favourite animal? Polar bear. A polar bear? Why is that? Because it's white and furry and it kills dolphins. Hello, guys. <laughs> Welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. We're all learning something new about Daniel Burke today. That was a joke, obviously. Um, they kill seals. I'm going to ask you what my favourite animal is. Um, what's your favourite animal? My favourite animal is a duck. Or a dog. What about an owl? I like owls. Yeah. I like owls, ducks, dogs and elephants. Four for the price of one. Oh. What's your favourite animals? Let us know in the comment section down below. Yeah, so today's video we're going to be talking about uh, kind of like, not necessarily creepy animals, but creepy things that they made or Because did. like, even though animals are great, I think we can all agree, sometimes they're really, really, really creepy. Yeah. Like Danny. Yeah, I'm a creepy animal, but I'm not on this list. All right, let's just hit on into this list. We have the top 10 scary animal creations. Ooh. All right, coming in at number 10, we have a beaver dam that can be seen from space. While at first this may not seem scary, really think about it. A beaver dam you can see from freaking space. Space. It's a popular myth that you can see the Great Wall of China from space, but like I said, it's a myth. The only human-made structures that you can see from space are the Bingham Canyon Mine, a mine made with dynamite, and the greenhouses of Almeria in Spain. That's what we get for all our fancy human tools and fancy human brains. Beavers, mate, they're coming through. Beavers are coming home. Beavers are adept builders, and they love nothing more than to make a nice big dam for themselves. The biggest beaver dam in the world was found in Wood Buffalo National Park in northern Alberta, Canada. Yes, you Canadian beavers! Canadian beavers do it best. The animal-made construct was measured at 2,790 feet, so twice the length of the Hoover Dam. Beavers just do it better. Say it with me now. Beavers do it better. Can we expect the beaver revolution soon? I think we can. We kind of feel like we're at their mercy and they have a very sharp bite. I crushed a beaver down once whilst portaging and it was really scary. They do not like their spaces being disturbed and if you're unlucky, while you try and cross one, they might pop out and bite you. Ow. Next up at number nine now, we have the giant ant colony. In 2012, experts in Brazil found an abandoned ant colony that they suspected was one of the biggest ones ever found. There was only one way to find out just how big it was though. They poured 10 tons of concrete into the holes on the surface, which served as air conditioning ducts for the ants. They knew it would take a day or two of pouring, but they didn't expect they'd be doing it for 10 whole days. When it was finally full and bubbling up to the surface and the concrete had then dried, they began exploring. Excavating. They uncovered an ant city that looked like something straight out of an alien movie. These tiny ants had excavated around 40 tons of soil to create this labyrinth. To put that in human perspective, the experts say that this thing is the equivalent of the Great Wall of China in terms of effort. Many people are a little bit disturbed by the sight of this, especially if you're not really into creepy crawlies. It can be a little bit unnerving to know that this is going on just inches below us. I knew you were going to put ants on this list. Uh, yeah, there's going to be more ants later on as of well. Of course it is. Yeah. It's just a space where you get to talk about ants. Yeah, I'd love to, I might do a channel about ants. You should. Should I? Yeah. Moving on from ants to termites. Coming in at number eight, we have termite monoliths. Take a look at this gothic looking castle of doom. No, Dracula's minions didn't build it for him, termites did it. Mound building termites are super efficient creeps that build high rises in their home countries of Africa, Australia and South America. Just realized that Africa's a continent, but they're all over, good. Now these mounds can sometimes be 30 meters in diameter and over six meters high. Have a look at the Bungle Bungle Park in Western Australia. The place is literally teeming in termites. Now each one of these mounds can house up to two million of the little critters. This is kind of horrifying. Do you want to know something weird as well? Despite building their towers high into the sky, the termites mainly live underground. Now this has absolutely baffled scientists for hundreds of years and they still don't have an exact answer answer as to why. A lot of people write bugs off as being pretty basic, but in actual fact, not only can termites build these incredible with bone chilling structures, they're also known to actively farm mold. Next up at number seven now, we have the whale song. Songs are created, we humans do it a lot, so do whales, and something really weird is happening with them. All around the world, blue whales aren't singing like they used to. The largest animals on the planet are actually singing in deeper voices every single year, and scientists 
don't know why. Ever since the 1960s, whales all over the world now sing on a frequency about 30% lower than they did before. Mark Donald is president of Whale Acoustics, a company that specializes in this kind of monitoring. He said, we just don't have an answer. We just have a lot of recordings. Mark and his team aren't convinced by the suggested explanations of ocean noise pollution, changing population dynamics, or new mating strategies. It's getting creepy now, and experts aren't even sure when it will end. Do these whales sense something changing in the ocean, perhaps on the whole planet? Is there something we don't know that they know? While humans scratch their heads trying to figure this one out, the whale song gets lower and lower and lower. So how low can you go? Coming in at number six, we have this horrifying spider web. I do not like a spider, I really don't. I am a nature lover, so basically I try and grin and bear them, but this is too much for me to accept. In 2007, these super giant spider webs arrived straight from your literal nightmares to Dallas in Texas. Lake Tawakoni State Park fell victim to a giant communal spider web that caused a stir on social media. 3,300 intrepid tourists visited the park over the Labor Day holiday. Now, apparently, the phenomenon occurred as a result of wet summer conditions, causing the park's spider population to explode. Texas Parks and Wildlife Department biologist Mike Quinn referred to the spider's work as sheet webbing, and it's thought to have covered the length of a football pitch. Ugh. One visitor described the webs as draping the tree like a shroud. Now, I don't know if you know what a shroud is, but it's like a funeral cloak that a dead person is buried in, so I don't feel good about the description. It doesn't make me feel better about spiders. The spiders, by the way, are thought to be Guatemalan long-jawed spiders. I never even thought about spiders having jaws, and now that's all I can think about. Apparently, the webs were so popular that the New York Times ran the pictures as their lead story. Local superintendent Garde said, the spiders are great little guys, they put our park on the map. Yeah, but also, ah, nope. How do you feel about spiders, Danny? I have a very natural response ready. I actually don't mind them, but if you don't like them, perhaps you'll like our next one because it definitely scares spiders. At number five now, we have the Mud Dorver Prisons. Wow, that was seamless. That's what they pay them for, ladies and gents. These wasps eat spiders, but in a very creepy way. Mud daubers build prisons for spiders made out of mud and wasp vomit. Sounds like I'm making it up, right? Pardon me, wishes I was, but no, they really do this. Mud dauber nests can contain dozens of these prison cells, and each cell can contain up to three spiders. You might be wondering why exactly the spiders just don't try and escape. Well, as much as I'd like to see a spider version of the Shawshank Redemption, they can't escape because the wasps actually paralyze them. At this point, even those of you who hate spiders are wondering why the wasps do all of this. Well, it's food, but not for them, for their babies. The wasps lay eggs on the paralyzed spiders. Once the eggs hatch, the wasp larvae finds its first meal ready to devour. Soon enough, it will be a fully grown wasp imprisoning spiders for the next generation to eat. It's kind of sweet, really. There are many things humans have copied from the animal kingdom. I don't think this will ever be one of them. At least I hope not. Wasps are creeps, hornets are creeps. Coming in at number four, we have the wooden hornet's nest. Blech. Wasps scare me at the best of times because they sting without remorse. Hornets are like even angrier wasps. At least with bees, stinging is a last resort, and actually saying that makes me really want to sing Papa Roach. But I won't, not now. Anyway, wasps and hornets can just keep on stinging, which makes them the literal worst. Again, bees live in hives, which are kind of pretty and functional as they give us wax or honey. Hornets, what do they give us? This. This is what you get from hornets. Thanks, hornets. Thanks for the carefree stinging in the sleepless nights. Wasps and hornets make their nests from chewing wood in a pulp and sticking it together with their saliva, which kind of sounds like the weird, strange vomit stuff Danny had going on before. Ah, they're gross, they're gross. They sting you and they're gross. Anyway, these hornets chose the creepiest wood to harvest and the creepiest place to set up their nest in an old wooden statue. This picture was shared on Reddit by Count Bubs, who said that their dad stumbled across the horrifying site in a shed that he hadn't used for years. Cool. You should always watch out, by the way, for a wasp or hornet's nest. They may look like they're old and abandoned, but the creepy little stingsters could be hibernating inside and waiting to sting you. Ah! 
Next up at number three now, we have the trapdoor spider. Spiders usually build webs. People who are scared of spiders are usually not too fond of webs either. However, there may be something even more creepy for a spider to live in, a trapdoor. The aptly named trapdoor spider in Australia digs burrows underground where they spend their entire lives. And they live quite a long time, around 20 years or more. Of course, they don't just live underground. If a door can close, it's usually supposed to open again. The trapdoor spider makes a door to their burrow using soil and leaves and even makes a hinge using their own silk. This allows a spider burrow to be completely invisible when sealed, so you'd never know if you were right next to it. They don't only use their silk for hinges though, oh no, they have a much more important use for it. The trapdoor spider sits and waits underground for its prey to pass by and trigger one of its specially made trip wires around its burrow. It will then leap out and drag its victim underground to consume it. If insects had horror movies, I think the trapdoor spider would probably be one of the biggest villains. There haven't been any reports of them dragging humans down, so I don't worry too much, but uh, I'm not going to take any chances. Hands up if you feel not great about a trapdoor spider. Ah, no, don't go trapping me, honey. Absolutely not. Making me feel even less good at number two, we have a crab that has decided to live in a baby's head. Great. Oh, hermit crab, you really have surpassed yourself with the level of creepy that you can achieve. By and large, I'm very pro crab, even though they're similar to spiders. I like the way that they walk sideways and they're kind of pincery. I guess I wouldn't love them if they lived in my house or my garden like spiders often try to, so maybe that's why I like them. Out of sight, fond in mind. That's definitely how it works. So this hermit crab is a coconut crab in the Pacific Islands. Now guess what it decided to live in? Yeah. Ah, the creepy decapitated head of a vacant eyed doll. Always my first choice. If I saw that monstrosity coming towards me, I think I would do more than scream. The doll's head also seemed to rot and deteriorate over time, making it look even scarier as the days went on. What is that kind of baby thing from Toy Story called? You know, the mutant one in Sid's room. This is like a real life version of that. To be honest, the fact that this exists is scary on a whole other level too. Hermit crabs usually use the empty shells of mollusks to protect themselves, but this crab used a plastic doll's head. Now this speaks volumes as to our ocean's pollution. Every year the world ocean sees a dump of anywhere between 5 to 14 million tons of plastic and other toxic debris. Now this debris releases toxins that are contributing to the biggest marine life mass extinction in a millennia. What have you got for number one, Danny? Well, at number one now, I have more spiders. I just have more spiders. I don't know what I talked about, I think. Spiders, spiders with a side of wasps. And ants. Mm, Some ants. Lovely. It's spiders the decoys at number one. In 2017, scientists in Peru discovered a new species of spider. That was pretty cool, but the spiders were doing something very strange. They were actually making models of themselves, tiny little fake spiders that would sit on their web. From a distance, these models look surprisingly like a spider, but they're actually made up of bits of leaves, debris, and even dead insects. At first, this might seem like some sort of strange ritual. Humans like to make models of ourselves for art or religion. Is that what these ants are doing? Is this some sort of ant religion? Scientists were amazed by the fact that every single spider model they found always had eight legs. It was like the spiders knew what they looked like somehow. Very creepy stuff. Because the species is such a recent discovery, scientists will need more time to fully understand how and why the spiders do this. The current theory is that they build these fake versions of themselves to act as decoys, perhaps as a defense mechanism to confuse predators, hopefully. That sounds a lot nicer than a spider religion starting in the Amazon. No, thank you. I don't like that. That freaks me out so much. They're making models of themselves and putting yeah. them in webs. Yeah, I, one of them even looked like it had the, like an ant head on and to be like a spider head, like a dead ant's head. It's a cult. It really is a cult. Yeah. Like, what do you think would happen if spiders were like, 500 times bigger than they are. Um, we probably had to act like them. I'd have my own web, you'd have your own web. And I'd, I'd have a fake little Danny in it. Yeah, I'd have a trap door. Um, creepy. Yeah, so to, creepy. I'd live out like that. That's a movie idea. Right a terrible now. one. Oh, I think it could be one of those like really terrible ones like Zombievers, and we could make so much money. Oh my God, let's do it. Oh, we do. Yeah. High five. That actually went quite well. Yeah, it did. <laughs> Doesn't always. So thank you guys for watching this video. Let us know what you found the creepiest, the scariest on this list. 
yet, don't forget to like and subscribe, and also let us know what you want to see next. I know all the videos we've been doing recently have been like scary, urban legends, that kind of stuff, but if you like these more like animal-y ones, I think we've got some animal lovers out there, then let us know, because we're very open to doing those too. We're animal lovers too. Danny and I daily talk about the Twitter account We Rate Dogs, because we love it, so shout out to them. Shout out to them. I hope they're watching. Thanks guys, see you next time. Bye. <laughs>